Greetings everyone, hello, and welcome to the tutorial of my Let's Play World. This particular portion is for the Alchemy Station, which is found under my hourglass in my LP world. We are going to be taking a look at how to build this, uh, but first I want to take a look at exactly how it is used. The way this works is uh, you select the modifiers for a potion you want, whether you want it to be a positive effect, uh, a powerful or an extended effect, a splash or a drinkable, negative, whatever effects you want uh, for the potion itself are selected first. And then you come over here and press the button for the type of potion you wish to receive. Uh, each time you press the button you get all the ingredients that you are required to have in order to brew the potion. So for example, if you press the strength button, you would get uh, three glass bottles, which you can then fill in the water below, a piece of nether wart, a blaze powder for the strength itself, and then appropriate modifier ingredients based on the way that you've selected your, uh, your modifiers here on the side of the levers. So, let's take a moment to mix a potion just to test this thing out. Uh, just for the heck of it, let's make this a really complicated one. Let's make it a negative effect splash potion that's more powerful. And why don't we just go with life? So this will be a splash damage potion uh, with a damage 2 effect. And we should get all the appropriate ingredients when I hit this button for life. So as soon as they all filter in here, you can see that we've gotten all the ingredients. We have the three water bottles, which we can fill. We have the nether wart we need in order to make the uh, potion accept uh, ingredients. We have the glistering melon to make it life, the fermented spider eye to make it the negative effect, and the glowstone and the uh, gunpowder to make it splash and... Uh, the more powerful effect. There is a downside to this design in that it is not completely comprehensive. For example, in uh, 1.4 with the new potion effects being added, this design is going to become a little deprecated and may need some modifications in order for it to be able to uh, to have access to all the new potion designs. Um, I know there's an invisibility potion being added and there may be some more effects as well. The other problem is that this can't easily make poison potions simply using the spider eyes. Uh, the only way to make poison potions with the system would be to make a regen potion, which of course requires a incredibly rare gas tier, um, and then of course turn it into a negative effect using the uh, fermented spider eye. So if you want to make poison potions or uh, maybe some of the potions in the future, you may, may require either modifications to the system or uh, just a separate station set up for manual potion creation. But for general use, for adventuring and for exploring and whatever else you may have to do in, the, in your normal Minecraft situations, this station is really quite useful. So let's go ahead and build one. Uh, for the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to use stone brick just to uh, show that you know different materials can be used, of course, for it. The aesthetics aren't really that important. I'm also going to be using these colored wool to represent the different potion types. Not only will it make it a little easier to identify things as we're building it, but the behind-the-scenes uh, wiring is much easier to take uh, to keep track of if you have each particular uh, element represented by its own color. First, start by building a 5x3 pad, like so, and then build up walls and a ceiling directly in this area of the same dimensions. This is the control area where the signs, buttons, and levers are going to be placed so you can make your decisions about what kind of potions you wish to receive. Next, I'm going to go ahead and set up all of the different buttons and levers with appropriately colored colored wool. And I'll place all the signs and then do a very brief overview just to show you uh, the sort of theme that I'm going for uh, with this. Okay, I've got the wool and the buttons and the levers and such placed. You can choose to uh, make these buttons actually colored with the wool if you wish. You can leave them, of course, whatever material you want. Um, I just find that this particular organization works quite well for the purposes of keeping things organized. And similarly over here, the colors are optional, but uh, can be useful as you continue to wire this. We're going to get into the slightly more technical aspects of this build here in just a moment. So bear with me. I've never really done a tutorial like this before, and I want to make sure that I try to be as clear as possible. So uh, if you have any comments about how this goes, please uh, let me know because uh, I would like to learn how to uh, do this sort of tutorial better for you guys in the future. First we'll do the button portion. This is actually fairly straightforward. All you have to do is hang a redstone torch off of each block. Now we're going to need to 
allow these two at the bottom here, their signals need to be transported vertically. So the way we can do this is to punch out these blocks here, use some redstone below. This redstone will then power the blocks adjacent to them. And then we can use our wool, of course, to represent the path upward and place torches on these. Now all five buttons have a representation. They're all at the same height with the same level of power. This will make it much easier to create the dispenser effect and the master wire, which we'll do here in a moment. But the first thing we need to do is we need to seal up the rest of this place to uh, shield it from, from prying eyes. This is where things are going to get a little bit more involved, but it's still not too difficult. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put an extra layer of the wool directly on top of all the torches to pass on the signal. And then you're actually going to want to put two sets of torches on here. This top set here will serve as the master wire which will trigger every other dispenser in the entire system. All five of these will be connected in just a moment and then that line will connect to all the other dispensers so that when it, whenever any of the buttons are pressed all of the appropriate materials are dispensed. Similarly we need to have a wire available for all of the other uh, each of the individual uh, buttons that way each individual one can have its own dispenser separate from the other ones to dispense the appropriate ingredient. For this we need to put a torch on this side. Once we've got these five torches placed here, we need to attach them to some, some dispensers so that they can actually dispense their goods. The easiest way to do this is to place blocks on all five of these. When these torches are lit, when the buttons are pressed, these blocks above them will be powered, which will subsequently power these dispensers right next to them. If you're worried about these lining up correctly, you can punch out this very middle block and you can see that we are directly in the center of our control station. You should be able to look up and see the dispenser right above the hole. If you're really not sure that they're lined up, you can always put your own colored wool into each relative dispenser and then test them out. You can hear the click and you can see that the light blue wool was dispensed and let's test this one. There you go. You can see that the red wool was dispensed as well. Now that we have the dispenser set up, we need to tease out the master wire as was stated before. We will go ahead and extend these wool systems just one block higher and then cover the top of these with redstone. As aforementioned, uh, whenever you press any of the buttons now, any of these respective torches will light, which will cause this entire wire to light, which will then uh, allow you to dispense the ingredients. Furthermore, before we move on to the other side, we're going to go ahead and start a extra little bit of the master wire out here, just as a way to help sculpt things in the future. This block should be one higher than the, than the wire above the colored wool, and all three of these will require redstone dust. Now let's take a look at how we're going to wire up the piston array that we will have to control with the levers. So it'll allow us to decide which optional ingredients can be dispensed. Similar to the other side, you're going to want to hang a redstone torch off of each of the uh, powered blocks. And we're going to want to use a very similar technique of transmitting power vertically. But there's a little bit of a twist. Over here on these sides, we actually need to invert the signal to a certain degree. So you'll want to put a pool of redstone under each of the side uh, blocks, a block next to it, similar to what we did on the other side, and then carry the signal vertically, like so. Alright, let's go ahead and connect the pistons now. You want to put an extra block here on top of the left and right sides and a sticky piston placed directly adjacent to those blocks. By default these will be extended but uh, of course this will be toggled by the levers below. Sticky pistons are rather silly if you don't actually have a block on top of them to control. And this block is what will dictate whether or not the 
uh, dispensers receive power. To that end, let's go ahead and set up the power uh, system for those blocks. We need to actually lower down our master signal, one block on each side, and now we can place our dispensers on top of these blocks. So what will happen is, if the pistons are extended, this block will be present, and the power that is carried through the master line here will power this block, thus powering the dispenser. If the piston is lowered, because you have made a specific selection, the master line has nothing to power here, and thus the dispenser will not fire. Before we forget, we need to put some dispensers in that will handle the three glass bottles, since you'll have to dispense three per button press, as well as the nether wart. These are fairly easy to locate the good position for. We can place one here and here safely. Each of these will be powered by the master wire as it goes above. And similarly, we can place them here and here. This still allows us room to retrieve the drops from the corner dispensers whilst providing us plenty of room for the other items to flow around as we uh, dispense them. We're getting close to putting the finishing touches on this build, but as you can tell, it's fairly complicated. If you need to, take a moment just to rewind the video very briefly and examine things as I've uh, gone over them. Take some time to make sure that your uh, build looks exactly the same as mine. Okay, now it's time to get a little asymmetrical. Unfortunately, there's no way to avoid it as much as I would like to uh, leave things completely symmetrical. There's no way to do that for this particular build. Either way, it's time to pus place the piston de resistance. So let's go ahead and continue to convey this redstone signal upwards, like so. We'll place a pool of redstone here, attach a block to the side, to the side, and a sticky piston next to it. Now what we can do is we can attach a block to this sticky piston and use this master wire here to dictate which of these two dispensers that we're about to place will be the one that receives the power from the master line, thus dispensing its goods. These dispensers are placed in a slightly silly configuration, but this definitely works even if it looks like it doesn't. The first one can be placed here, and the second one can actually be placed directly in front of it. Due to the way Minecraft physics works, any blocks or items dispensed by this dispenser will actually fall through the one in front of it, causing no congestion issues at all. Now, based on our selection on the middle lever, we will receive one of two items. If you recall, the middle lever is the one that, that dictates whether or not we will be brewing more powerful or more durable or extended duration potions. If it's a powerful one, we want to receive a glowstone dust, and if it's the extended one, we want to receive a redstone dust. In order to ensure that all of our items flow into the appropriate locations, we need to make sure that we place some blocks in some specific areas here as we get close to finishing this build. Let's go ahead and make a ledge right here. We can put a separator in the middle, as it's not important for there to be blocks here, and we want to make sure that any items dispensed from these dispensers on the sides do not land on a floating block. And we need to allow uh, the water to flow appropriately uh, from equal distances to the center area to make sure that they all flow to a single location. To that end, we're going to go ahead and build up some extra uh, height into this backwards area. Water source box will be placed here, 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 and here, all of which will ultimately flow from an equal distance to the center location, ensuring that every single drop, uh, every single item that is dispensed within the system arrives where it is supposed to. At this point, we've more or less finished wiring everything up, but there are still a few extra considerations we have to keep in mind. We should take a moment to examine every dispenser and make sure that when it dispenses its items, it's not likely to dispense them onto another ledge or to have them otherwise have some sort of interference within the system. We can see that these two dispensers here may have a small chance of dropping their cargo on this row of dispensers, whoa, this row of dispensers right here. To that end, let's go ahead and seal this up to make sure that that doesn't happen. Similarly, these dispensers up here could maybe cause some problems. There is a chance that they may dispense onto this ledge, albeit a slim one, 
Unfortunately, we can't really place a full block there because it would cut off the redstone signal. However, glass is actually usable as a way to cut off a block's uh, travel area, but not cut off a redstone signal. So a single block of glass will uh, ensure that none of the items will be wasted from either of these dispensers. Things are starting to get a little cramped in here, so this may be a good time to fill up your dispensers. I'm not going to do so in this video because it's just a little tedious, but it should be pretty obvious to figure out exactly how things go. These side dispensers here, if you just follow the wool, you can tell exactly which ingredients belong in which. So for the black wool here, this is the negative effect. So this is where fermented spider eyes should go. Similarly, this is the light gray or the dark gray wool, which is the splash effect, meaning that gunpowder should go here. And likewise, if you just look at each of these different colors and match them up to their appropriate buttons, you can see which ingredient belongs in which dispenser. These two dispensers right here and these two dispensers right here are where your nether wart and glass bottles will go. One of the four should contain nether wart and the other three should contain glass bottles. Lastly, these two up here are going to be the hardest for you to dis discern which uh, belongs in which because there's no clear label as to which uh, method is the, is the uh, appropriate for which. If you, if you come down here, you can see that right now we are set for powerful and we can see that the block is, is, is next to this dispenser, meaning that the ingredient for powerful, i.e. glowstone dust, should be placed in this dispenser, while this dispenser should receive the redstone dust. Let's go ahead and wrap up the outside of the build, and the last few touches involve water. Okay, we've wrapped up the outside of the build. It's fairly straightforward. It's uh, very easy just to build up the walls and put a flat roof on top. There's very little risk that you will interfere with any of the wiring as long as you make sure that you are not uh, cutting the walls a little too close. Now that we have the external covering on, we can put a sign up here in the middle to prevent water from flowing through. And we can go ahead and hop inside and put in the water as uh, it was discussed before. Now one thing about this design is that it is very compact and it is fairly difficult to get back up in here to be able to refill your ingredients. I'd recommend building this if you already have a plethora of ingredients and don't feel like you'll ever really need to refill them. All the dispensers are accessible from this inside area so if you, if you can manage to get up here via an ender pearl you can refill them if necessary but ultimately I would suggest uh, just having as many ingredients as possible on hand before you start filling the dispensers up before you even really build this to make sure that your uh, experience is um, as convenient as possible. Also uh, lighting is completely unnecessary up here but just in case it doesn't hurt to put a glowstone block in or two just to brighten things up a little bit. So let's go ahead and put our water sources in the four locations we had mentioned just momentarily before. Once all the water has been placed, you can see that all the water flows exactly where we want it, right above the sign, so all the items will flow through without a problem. And that is more or less the entire build. One optional thing you can do if you're feeling uh, a little brave, I suppose, you can actually destroy the block under the fire resistance, well in my case the fire resistance uh, uh, button. And of course we want to pretty it up if at all possible. Make sure there's a block behind it and if you have access to silk touch and thus ice place a block of ice there and a torch nearby temporarily to let it melt. When this block melts it actually won't cause a block update so you'll have a freestanding block of water with which you can fill up your water potions without any problems. Just be wary of placing blocks in the nearby area because you may end up updating the block, thus causing a flood and some and some uh, buttons and such to be knocked off. As long as you're careful, it really shouldn't be a big issue. As you can see, the ice is melted, and we can very easily fill water potions without a problem. So that's it. A fairly simple and very diverse and very powerful potion making station, which I hope you feel encouraged to build in your own world, and maybe even experiment and expand the design. I would love to see or hear about any modifications you guys come up with, or otherwise receive any feedback you might have about this uh, particular build. Again, as I mentioned before, there are some downsides and limitations to it, but overall I'm very happy with this design.
It's fairly compact, reasonably easy to build, requires fairly few materials, is aesthetically variable. You can uh, design it in any visual style you wish. There's no particular requirements about what block could be used on the external, so you could make this out of snow or end stone or whatever material you wish. And uh, otherwise, I hope this has uh, been a useful tutorial. Again, I would love to hear any feedback in the comments below about uh, what you thought about this tutorial or this build in particular. I'm going to try to put the world download available down in the description uh, so you guys can come check this out in person if you wish. And uh, yeah, otherwise, uh, have a great day. Hope you've enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. I realized as I was editing this video that it was a little dry. So here's a bunch of squids with swiftness potions. Enjoy!